la vida, no sé si lo dice así. <risa> eh, bueno, eh, a quienes no la conocen, eh, ella está ya hace unos cuantos meses eh, aquí en Córdoba eh, y bueno, va, va a tener un cargo simple para hacer docencia. Eh, y, eh, estuvo, ¿Cuántos años estuvieron en, en Chile? ¿Tres años? Casi cinco años. Casi cinco años. Estuvieron trabajando en Chile con, con Humberto. <risa> eh, y bueno, decidieron eh, trasladarse a Argentina. Así que es una que nos hace elegir, es el elegido por ¿no? eh, Bueno, y hoy Anita nos va a hablar eh, sobre Introduction to the General Knots in Contact Free Manifest. Thank you very much for the invitation and the presentation. Today I'm going to give an introduction to Legendria Nuts in contact three manifold. First of all, uh, we need some background to recall uh, let E be a vector space a finite dimensional over a field K S, pardon, a symplectic form sigma on E is a non-degenerate bilinear non-degenerate yeah. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> non degenerates two forms, um, two forms sigma on E, uh, by two form I mean um, anti-symmetric, anti symmetric bilinear uh, mapping sigma uh, bilinear it it means uh, con re with respect to coordinates is linear and anti-symmetric uh, it satisfies this condition and by non-degenerate we mean that uh, if sigma uv is uh, zero for any v, then uh, u is zero. Or to better understand this, uh, you can consider this linear mapping as this mapping um, and. In fact, no, to be non-degenerate means that the matrix of this mapping is non-degenerate. The matrix has independent uh, rows or independent columns. Um, okay, now a symplectic manifold. In fact, at, at each point, um, if you have a manifold, say, X is symplectic if at each point of uh, x, uh, the tangent space is a symplectic vector space. Uh, and uh, there is an extra condition that d of sigma should be 0, or sigma is a closed form. And the other fact is that uh, locally, any symplectic manifold looks like looks like um, 
uh, well, uh, if it is uh, of dimension 2n, R2n with the uh, standard symplectic form. And we remember that if uh, a standard symplectic form is something like this summation uh, on the Cartesian coordinates. So, and the, the, we remember that uh, symplectic manifolds has this characteristic that they are even dimension. Uh, and the other things to remember is that uh, uh, there are special submanifolds which are called Lagrangian submanifolds, which have half dimension, in this case n dimension, and isotropic isotropic uh, and this means that um, if we call such a manifold for instance L the symplectic form sigma on L is zero for any U and V in L. Okay now let's see definition of the contact structure. Let M be an odd dimensional, say, two N minus one dimensional manifold. A contact a structure eta uh, on M is a hyperplane field. Well, a contact structure on M is a hyperplane field eta in tangent bundle such that it is maximally non-integrable. Okay, first of all, uh, hi by hyperplane field, we means that, um, in fact, at each point, we have bunch of, instead of one vector field, we have a bunch of field, uh, vector fields. Um, integrable here, um, it means that if we have a submanifold N in M, then for any point in N, the tangent space on N is in this uh, hyperplane field. So, but let's see what does it mean non-integrable and maximally non-integrable. Um, there is a fact that uh, locally um, any hyperplane field can be written Uh, as the kernel of a uh, one form. It's not hard to see, um, maybe later I will explain. Um, so, since we have, we know this fact, let alpha be such a one form. So, um, Eta is kernel of alpha. And then we have a we have a theorem, nice theorem from from Menius. It says that there exists um, a two n minus two dimensional integral 
uh, submanifold if and only if alpha which the alpha is zero. Uh, well, actually, for Avenue's theorem, it has several versions uh, in con with respect of uh, vector fields, Lie bracket, or this is the other version in terms of differential forms. Uh, they indicated. So now, if assume we have a, this uh, integral sub manifold and this condition. So if this is zero. So alpha wedge d alpha, wedge d alpha, because this is zero, is zero. Or in other words, alpha wedge d alpha n minus one is zero. And this is, again, by Frobenius theorem, is equivalent to say that there exists an n integral Submanifold. So now let's back to the definition. Here we want non integrable uh, submanifold. Therefore, this condition it says that alpha wedge d alpha n minus 1 should be non zero. Okay, but up to now, Everything is locally um, because of this, we use this fact. But if um, we can find global, global defined uh, one form alpha, if and only if eta is co-orientable. The co-orientable means that uh, the orthogonal complement of the eta is orientable. Yeah, when we have this uh, summation, this is orientable. So we have, uh, and we know that uh, this actually has one dimension uh, because eta is 2n minus 2 dimensional uh, space in Tm. So we have a orientable one dimensional like bundle, line bundle. So there is a like non-zero section and we can define a, a form assume x is non-zero section Therefore, we can define alpha x as uh, by this metric G, as this uh, uh, interior border. Okay, so from now on, we assume that uh, our manifolds are co-orientable. Uh, and so uh, we have a global defined one form. So such a global defined one form alpha is called contact form and M together with eta contact structure is a contact manifold. Okay, now uh, we look at this again. From this, actually, we find that mm, this is the top form, is a volume form. So M is orientable because alpha is one form, so D alpha two form, 2N minus 2 plus 1, 2N minus 1. M is orientable. And the other fact that uh, fact is that uh, in fact eta together with this d alpha is a symplectic bundle. 
symplectic vector band. Or at each point, we have a symplectic manifold with this symplectic form. Uh, okay, now as an example, consider R3, R space, uh, with this uh, actually contact structure. Um, And it is easier uh, to check that this, this contact form, uh, alpha, satisfies this condition. And the same uh, in symplectic manifolds that here I mentioned, um, in fact, uh, Darbo theorem, that uh, locally any symplectic manifold looks like R2n with a, simple, a standard symplectic form. In contact manifold also, we have Darbo theorem that locally any contact manifold looks like okay, if it is of dimension 2n minus 1, looks like R to n minus 1 with the, this uh, contact structure. And um, well, actually, in three dimensions, is this one. Um, for this reason, uh, they call this contact structure a standard contact structure. Um, Okay, and if uh, in this dimension, in fact, eta is a standard is kernel of um, dz minus sum of yj dxj. Yes, and about this, um, the, um, in fact, the statement of the Darbo theorem, uh, when we say locally looks like uh, R2n minus 1, what does it mean? It means that there is a contact homorphism, say phi, from uh, a neighborhood in uh, our manifold to neighborhood of R2n minus 1 such that the pullback of this eta, uh, this contact structure, uh, pardon, uh, this contact form is the contact form in, on M. And contact homorphism, uh, you should have this homorphism and it preserves the contact structure, so you can say, it, um, if you want to describe by forms, you consider pullback of forms. Uh, okay, so... And then here, the same as Lagrangian submanifolds in symplectic case, uh, here we have Legendrian submanifolds. Uh, I write it. So. A Legendrian submanifold uh, is, say, L is tangent to 
to the contact structure. So it means that at each point, the tangent space on L is in uh, hyperplane field or contact structure. And the same as in, in this case, symplectic Lagrangians, they, are half, they have half dimensional. And here, if um, M has 2N minus 1 dimension, we saw that uh, actually eta has 2N minus 2 um, dimension symplectic vector bundle. So L has dimension equal to n minus 1. OK, uh, example of this uh, Legendrian sub-manifold, uh, a, a very big part, actually, is Legendrian knots. So let's see first uh, what is not. A not, I mean uh, topologically, topological, topological not is an say K, a topological not K is an embedding. of circle into, here I assume, R3. And then you can uh, classify knots by uh, the, the formation of these knots, these topological objects, uh, through isotopies, which is uh, this map uh, which at time equal to, uh, imagine this is an interval of time, at uh, zero time uh, is k0, at time 1 is k1, and uh, between all these movements for any time t, uh, you have an embedding. Okay, now a Legendrian knot, knot is a topological knot and it has an extra condition which is a Legendrian knot is tangent to the contact structure. The same as a uh, definition here I gave you. Now imagine a knot is tangent to this hy hyperplane field. Um, okay, now let's see what does it mean. In fact, uh, in, in R3 actually I'm going to explain. So we remember that the contact, uh, contact a standard contact structure is the kernel of uh, bz minus y dx. So if Legendrian knot is tangent to this uh, hyperplane field, therefore dz minus y dx is zero. Or uh, y is equal to or um, dz is equal to y dx. And this means that y dx is an exact form. And we know from cohomology of Durham that the integral of such uh, exact form is zero. Uh, 
Uh, if you don't remember this, actually in uh, calculus, um, it's like fundamental theorem of uh, calculus integral. Uh, when you have an integral uh, over a domain, closed domain, when i is equal to b, this is equal to fb minus fi and it's zero. It's something like that. And so the integral of this is zero over a closed curve. And then now by a stocks, we have, in fact, dy wedge dx over a domain d, which is bounded by c is zero. So d is domain which bonds uh, c. So, and what is this? This is area of D. So, and actually, it's like algebraic sum of D. It's equal to zero. So, it means that if we want to have legendary and not, the uh, area of that, um, um, the area which is bounded by the knot should be zero. Therefore, maybe you have seen before some examples. Um, this, this cannot be Legendrian. But the simplest Legendrian, actually this is an knot. The simplest one is this, because here we have area positive, here area negative. So the area is zero. And so this is not legendary. But topologically, they are both the same. So there are other examples, uh, for instance, of a knot something like this, and the area of this should be zero. But it is uh, topological, not the same as this and this. Okay, to visualize uh, knots, in general, we consider a Lagrangian projection. And what is this? It is just simply, um, if we imagine our space x, y, z, it's just projecting everything to x, y uh, plane. So for instance, if imagine you have this, so the projection is something like this in, in the plane. And of course, it should be generic. And by generic, we mean that during the process of a projection, we don't want to get tangency. We always want to have crossings and uh, singularities. Um, and there is another type of projection, which is called a front projection. In this case, so x, y, z, we project everything to x, z plane. And in this case, it is interesting to see that we don't have such a tangency. And the reason is that if we have, so once again, uh, because we have a legendary and not, so we have uh, the, the kernel of contact form is contact structure. So uh, dz minus y dx is zero. So y is dz over dx. And if we have such a tangency, it means that this is going to infinity. And, it, and so y is going to infinity. 
And this is in contradiction to have an embedding, embedding of a legendary and not as a closed submanifold. So, and how we correct it? Okay, when Y goes to infinity, so it means that 1 over Y goes to 0, or the, the, the X over the Z goes to 0. And this means that we have cusp, cusp points. When we go to, it goes to uh, plus infinity, we get something like this, and this is for minus infinity. So instead of this picture, so we have cusps, cusp point. So maybe you have seen already some examples of Legendrian knots, for instance, something like this. And so now you know why we draw it like this. And this is, in fact, is equals to this. Um, so, in fact, to compare these two kinds of projections, um, in fact, this movement is equivalent to this cusp, and this is equivalent to this one. Um, actually, the mathematical argument comes from this kind of uh, things. But intuitively speaking, uh, you can feel it that here, if you uh, pull these two strands like this, you can open it like that. And if you uh, pull this uh, like that, and then you get this. This is the idea. Um, Okay, so now let's talk about a little about invariance of uh, legendary knots. Invariance. Uh, in fact, we have several type of uh, invariance, topological. Invariance, uh, which are uh, like knot groups, which are fundamental group of the complement of the knot, or polynomial uh, invariance, quantum invariance, Vasiliev invariance. Um, the second one is Thurston. Menekin number fourth uh, third the rotation number and fourth Legendrian homology. Okay, if a uh, Talking about Legendrian knots, of course, they should, um, as a topological knots, uh, satisfy this uh, topological invariance. And now let's see what is thurston benekin invariant. This I explain in, a, in an example. Um, imagine we have this Legendrian knot. The way to calculate this uh, invariant is that consider this knot in this contact plane. So we, in the plane of this, Legendary knot, which is tangent to contact plane, 
I consider the push of this legendary and not by considering at each point vectors which are transverse to this or not. So now I draw another knot like this. I get another knot, but they are linked. It is linked with the other one. And Thurston Benekin invariant is the linking number of this link. Linking number. And which is, in this example, is equal to minus one. Uh, I don't know if it is clear, the picture, uh, to see or... <laughs> Okay, but this is the simplest uh, example, and to compute, uh, and actually this is a knot. If we have a, um, if we have knot, I mean uh, without cutting the uh, string, we cannot open it. If we have a knot or complicated a knot, uh, there is a formula in terms of uh, Lagrangian projection, and it is the right of uh, Lagrangian projection. And this is the summation of cross, um, sign of crossings So there is a convention that this crossing has sign minus one, this has positive. So in our example, this is, has sign minus one and it's only one crossing, so TB is um, minus one. And then in front projection, the formula is again the sign of crossings, but of front projection minus half of number of cusps. For instance, this uh, you remember that it was this one. So we don't have crossings minus, so let me I draw, in front projection has this picture. It doesn't have crossings, so zero minus half of two cusps. So it's minus one. So let's see another example, for instance, this one. This has TB, first and Benneke number, minus two. Here is minus one crossing, here also minus one. So now you see that you have two topological knots, a knot, uh, which are not the same. This TB here is minus two. 
In this example, minus one. So by this invariant, we could distinguish two topological uh, unknot and in uh, front projection, the picture of this is like this. And here, again, we don't have any crossings. 0 minus half of 1, 2, 3, 4, minus 2, the same. In front projection, in Lagrangian projection. And now, look at this um, example. What is TB of this? Again, we don't have crossings. Zero minus half of number of cusps. One, two, three, four, minus two. Now we got uh, an example of two legendary knots that this invariant cannot distinguish. They are the same invar invariant. So we have another invariant, which is uh, the third one, rotation number. Again, uh, on an example, I tell you how it works. Uh, if you consider any point of this uh, curve, uh, a vector field, tangent vector field, and you count the number of uh, uh, movement of this vector along the circle, uh, clockwise or counterclockwise. So here, if we move So we got back to here, it's one, and then two times. But the, these two orient, orientation is different. This is, uh, if you consider it one time, and the other minus, so it's zero. Rotation number of this is zero. Okay, and um, so let's consider again these two that um, by thurston Benecki number, we couldn't distinguish them. Um, but by rotation number, in fact, the formula is half of a number of cusps, which goes down minus a cusp goes up. So, uh, in this example, here, if we consider the orientation of the legendary knot, um, we get rotation is half of cusps going down. One, two, three, and there is one up. So it's three minus one, uh, two is one. And then for this one, again, if we consider orientation like this, rotation is equal to half of one cusp down and one, two, three up. So here is minus one. So we see that rotation number of this one is different with this one. So for this reason, in fact, there is a Eliasberg and Razor, they gave a complete classification for Legendrian or not. And in fact, you, we can visualize 
this uh, theorem or result uh, by this picture if you consider this as uh, rotations and here TB we saw that uh, here TB of this the simplest Legendrian or not is minus one and rotation is zero so I put it here zero minus one and then the other example these two with rotation one and uh, Pb minus two and here rotation minus one minus two we can continue like this well locked and etc to get complete uh, classifications in terms of uh, TB first and number and rotation number okay and then uh, the other invariant is Legendrian homology I guess it's better I leave it for other occasion <laughs> So thank you very much. <laughs>